What's up, my friend? Welcome back to another video. And today we are taking a look at a question that I get all the time. And that is, how do I actually get musical results in my mock-up? And maybe a bit more specifically, how do I get uh, a, a sound or performance that sounds natural, that feels emotional, that feels like something a performer would actually play, right? Because um, a lot of the times when we hear mock-ups, one of the big giveaways of an amateur mock-up is that we hear the instruments, but somehow it doesn't sound right because it doesn't quite sound like how a real performer would actually perform a line. And I'm talking more about a, a smooth, connected sort of legato line. So how do we actually create the expression and the dynamics in that line so it sounds natural and musical, right? And so we're gonna answer that question here in this video. It's gonna be super short, but super practical. Um, if you apply this right away, it's going to give you those results in your mockups whenever you have a legato line. It's just a different way of thinking about the, the performance. So let's quickly talk about this. Um, the simple way to really just get that musical result is by riding the mod wheel in the same direction as what your melody is in as well. So that maybe is a slight oversimplification, but let me say that again. If you ride your mod wheel in the same direction as your melody is traveling, 90 to 95% of the time, this will get you a result that sounds natural and musical. So what I wanna do is play uh, the A section of my piece Loves Rapture here, and then I'm going to quickly dissect why this kind of works. So let's have a quick listen. All right, and we'll stop there. So what do you notice, right? Like if you take a look at this performance, if you take a look at the MIDI notes, there's, first of all, there's sort of a natural contour here. So it goes up and then it comes back down. It goes up and then it comes back down, right? Up, down, up, down. So even, even before talking about modulation, if you want a melody that sounds natural and smooth, then if you have sort of a smooth contour that has its ups and its downs and doesn't jump all over the place, then it's going to be more singable for the general public because people are used to talking in sort of a conversational tone where intonation goes up, intonation comes down, depending on what they're trying to say, right? So if you're talking about a romantic piece of music where there's natural swells, then you should try to achieve that with your melodic shape as well. But in addition to that, if you want to make that sound musical and br bring that life into the performance, that's where the mod wheel comes in. So the mod wheel generally is mapped to dynamic layers in the way that uh, developers will basically record different dynamic performances. So for the violin section, let's say, they'll record them playing very, very quietly, like pianissimo, which naturally sounds very quiet and, and almost wispy if you want, if you want to put it that way. And then they might record a louder dynamic, let's say forte, um, where it's a little bit more passionate. There's there's a louder sort of intensity and intention in the performance. And then they might record like triple fortes or fortississimo, right? Where they, it's super passionate. You really hear the bow against the string and the sound just really resonates in the hall. That's very different than just talking about volume itself because volume is just louder and softer, but volume doesn't account for the dynamic layers uh, at all, right? So usually when we're working with mockups, we're using a combination of dynamic crossfading, like going between those different dynamic layers and general volume as an external, uh, like additional parameter to make the overall performance louder or softer. But the, the core thing I like to focus on is the dynamic layers. So the thing about this library is that it really is only just one dynamic layer and it's basically recorded at that mezzo forte to forte dynamic. So it's only one dynamic layer, but the mod wheel does trigger some loud and soft differences. At the very bottom of the wheel, it's a little bit quieter and at the top, it's a little bit louder. So I still like to ride the mod wheel, but you notice that it kind of matches the shape of my melody. As the notes go up here and go down, the, the modulation here does the same as well. So let's have a quick listen one more time. Right, da, da. and then it kind of calms down as the mod wheel calms down. Now we crescendo into the high F there. It's a leap of an octave, very passionate. Come back down, rise back up, the peak of the melody, and come back down. And now we come back up a little bit. Da, 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 da. And 
now here we start at crescendo so you can see the modulation also going up a little bit as well. And the whole point of this is just to create a result that feels like a singer. A lot of the times uh, we're trying to create melodic lines that could call back to the most natural human element, the most natural human instrument, which is the voice, the human voice. And as a general rule of thumb, the higher you sing, the more energy you're going to expend, right? The more effort. So we're kind of replicating that with our instruments as well. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Let me, let me show you the other example, which is the violin section here. And we're going to play the audio file, but we'll take a look at the MIDI data at the same time. So again, we rise up and then we kind of come down and get a little crescendo into the high F. And come back down and then rise up again and back down. Settle down and then rise up. And I really wanted to let the counter melody come in. So that's why I really dipped the modulation down here. And then you can see the modulation here overall is a little quieter. It's it's less than halfway, right? All the way up here would be really loud. But down here, I kind of set it there because the woodwinds then take over the main melodic role. So I didn't want them to overpower anything. But that's the general idea, right? So the thing about CSS, this is CSS, by the way, is that um, it does have multiple dynamic layers. And so that basically means that they have recorded all those different dynamic performances. And so I crossfade between those different performances by using the mod wheel. And that gives me a lot of uh, that realism, realism that I'm going for when I hear those performances transition from more subdued to really uh, not louder, but passionate and loud as well, right? So that's what you get when you when you have multiple dynamic layers that crossfade really smoothly. It feels like a more real, realistic performance. So all in all, if you keep this in mind, as a general rule of thumb, use the modulation to follow the melody. Keep this in mind, 90 to 95% of the time, it's going to give you a good result. Of course, there are going to be exceptions, but I think using a, a longer melody, something that has kind of a, a nice shape of it in it, uh, is more of a practical way to look at this and, and to think about it. And I'm personally a really visual person, so uh, just looking at this kind of helps me reinforce what I'm trying to share here in, in this video is really just follow the melody. Uh, again, always ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish with this melody and what sort of instrument am I trying to replicate? If I'm using something more melodic in nature and more expressive, a lot of the times that can harken back to the human voice. So human voices are the most expressive, most raw instruments we have. So if we think about it in sort of a vocal context, how would we sing the melody and then take that and then apply to your virtual instruments. I think it's a lot easier to think about it that way. Even if you're not a singer, just hum it out to yourself, by yourself if you're embarrassed, right? Just hum it out to yourself and then ask yourself, how can I replicate this in uh, my virtual instruments using my sample libraries? And following this method is usually a really good way to go. So use that melody to, or sorry, the modulation to follow the shape of the melody, come up when it the melody goes up, come down when it comes down. So you're, you know, you're crescendoing and then tapering as the melody calls for it. And it's, a really straightforward way to do it, but it's really effective at the same time. All right, so that's just a really quick tip I wanted to share with you in this video. If you wanna kind of dive into a, a really step-by-step -step sort of orchestral process that you can use for your mock-ups, if you want those clear virtual orchestrations that uh, really sound professional, then I wanna give you a totally free guide called Orchestration Essentials. I put this together because a lot of my students were asking for kind of a structured framework to go from their initial idea to the completed orchestration. And so I condensed all of my practical steps into just a simple guide that you can download using the first link in the box below. And I wanted to give it to you as a gift for watching this video today. So hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully you use it and apply it to your mockups and see those results right away. Anyway, thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next one and take care. Bye-bye.